Oh shit, we got uh, we got somebody here, bro. Uh oh, we got Uh-oh. some. Yeah, it's about that time. It's seven oh two. Yeah, it's about that time. All right, so here we go. We are gonna get back to this shit here. We are gonna get back. We go. We gonna bring them into some shit. I bring our guest in. Oh, oh, everybody, oh. y'all get ready. If you didn't know, now you know. In the building, the hustler, big cast in the building. What up, cat? The most people on the band. Oh, yep, yep, yep. What's good with you, fam? Looking like. You got my guy. Where you reside at right now? You said where I reside at? Yeah. All around the world, man. Wherever, <laughs> I, wherever I feel like resting at, that's where I'm at, man. <laughs> wherever you hang your hat. Sure. I, I get it. But but Cass, the, the king of battle rap, legendary for for a lot of things that many could speak about. Um, a lot of your music that definitely changed the game. Definitely, your flow is unique. I don't think anybody sound like you. Like I know when I'm listening to a Cassidy joint early, and you know, not for nothing. I think some of, and, and I might get a little flack for this, but I think some of the the hardest bars and lyricists do come from Philly, though. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, because <laughs> you know, of course you're gonna agree because you from Philly. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's not that's not a lie though. That's that's serious business, man. Um a lot of fierce a lot of fierce um not just battle rappers, but just rappers in general come from Philly, man. It's a it's a certain hunger that comes out of that town, man, that's um undeniable. <clears throat> I think just the focus of Philly is more uh, I mean, I think people capable of doing good hip hop everywhere. You know what I mean? There's dope people in Philly, New York, Jersey, Miami, Atlanta, Texas, Arizona, Cali. It's like, it's dope people everywhere you go. But I just think like the location where Philly is at, it's like kind of close to New York. So <laughs> it's the foundation where it started, where a lot of the big business was going on at in the beginning of the industry. So it was like kind of close, not too far away. Like you could have relationships with people from New York if you in Philly, but it's still not all the way up top like New York. It's further down south, so the accent, the way of life is slower. It's just a whole different feel when you in the in the hood. So it's similar. You get like the advantages that New York and like North Jersey get, but then you get some of the the the. The southern advantage is a different type of music and food and, and, and culture that Philly brings to the table that get the rappers a, a little bit more to feed off of. No doubt. Um, sometimes you might got the advantage when you further down south, like if you're in Miami or Atlanta because of the type of music you listen to, you might have more bounces. So you might not focus on lyrics as much, but you might focus on flow play and bounces because the type of artists that you listen to coming up was bouncing all over the place and had all these crazy flows. And maybe right. in Philly, the artist that you was listening to was just straight bars. You know what I'm saying? So that's what you came up around. That's what you was into. So yeah. I, I think it got the, a lot to do with what everybody else doing in the environment that you in. And um, that will determine what you cling to and what you tend to, you know what I mean, develop your power around. What you gravitate towards. Well said. Well said. Yeah. So with, with you having a long career and you being able to do what you've done thus far, it's like, we all know you, you back into battle rap, right? Where, where you, where you kind of, where you started at. Nah, I, I don't like how that sound. I'm not in battle rap where I started at. I started in battle rap in the nineties, but for battle rap was a business. It was no money in it. Um, it was no battle leagues. It was nobody um, 
benefiting off battle rap. Battle rap was just a platform people use to try to get into the industry or to try to get more famous so they get their name known. So I was doing it when it was for that purpose. Now it's a business. It's like leads, yeah. all this money. It's people that don't even rap that's making a living off of battle rap and they don't even rap, you know what I mean? So it's a business now. It's a lot more people involved, a lot more rules and regulations and shit like that. So it's way different than when I did it. But I never left battle rap because I always seen how big it was going to get. I always knew that battle rap <clears throat> was important. Like people being competitive is important. That's why people like boxing, basketball, all these different types of sports because they like to see people be competitive. People like to pick a team or pick a side and say that this side is going to win and see what's going to happen. That's like a thrill people get. That's why sports, everything, even before all of these sports we had, even back in the ancient times, they used to go in the damn dome and set up fights or you had to fight a lion or they wanted to see something happen to be entertaining. So I knew battle rap was like the most, one of the most entertaining parts about hip hop. And I knew it was going to grow and there was going to be bags in it. So I told dudes I wasn't coming back until they gave me a certain amount of number. I mean, a certain number because of the work I already put in. So it's not like I left back and stopped doing it. I just was going <clears> to <throat> check because I deserved it already. Okay. No doubt. No doubt. So if that's I... clear to anyone, it done got answered. The reason why he wasn't doing it is because the bag wasn't big enough. <laughs> Yeah, and I knew that battle rap, I knew battle rap could grow. And if I didn't force it to grow, it would take a longer period of time. So by me busting that move and doing what I did, it kind of forced battle rap to grow even faster. You know what I'm saying? Because it forced them to get other people involved to try to make up for the fact that I put it around. So a lot of other people got in position, got hot, and a lot of people came up knowing that you can battle rap and make money and get paid and get a little famous and get a fan base off just battle rap and people seen that. But that was all because of the work that I put in. Before I put in the work that I put in, you didn't see that from battle rap. Yeah, it was, it was, if something was going on, it was something that you just heard about. It wasn't really out there and visualized the way that it is today. Sure. Speaking of battles, Cass, what do you think about the, um, the versus battles that's been going on recently with people you know, going like song for song and things like that. The most recent one I think was um, what Beanie Beanie Man and Bounty Killer, right? Piece about the recent one that came out. It might have been um, an R and B one, but what do you think of that though? Um, you know, when the culture the culture start moving in a certain direction, the uh, the business people and the industry try to follow along with that. So battle rap is growing, like battle rap is getting big, is in demand. People like to see people being competitive. I just mentioned that earlier. So even outside of battle rap, you could be watching sports um, commentary and you would see them being more battle, battle like they'll have like two people there that feel opposite ways to combat and battle to make it more interesting. Everybody trying to feed off that energy now. So that's what the industry trying to do. They trying to feed off that battle rap energy, off that competitive energy. They know people love to see people going at it. So no they doubt. Feed off that energy, but they doing it in an industry way. So it's not really a battle to me because all of the songs that's played, <clears throat> we could pull up on any platform. It's like I've I heard could before. All of them songs on Apple Music right now and have my own battle, like go from this person to that person and do it myself and just hear all the lyrics clear. So it ain't. It's not necessarily a battle to a dude like me that really battle and get busy, but it's entertaining though, especially during quarantine time, people locked in, is not enough to watch and everything that people like to watch, they don't watched already. So it's kind of interesting and entertaining to be able to look forward to stuff like that. But really what it is, is um, it's like an industry based move. Once they had them battles, you see how they streams go up. They, they the attention on the artists go up. So it's no like- doubt. It's like putting a marketing and promotion budget behind an artist to get them popping at the time. But they able to do that. Mm. It's not new and popping. They able to do that with artists that was already lit. And you could just bring them back and make them lit now without right. having to really do too much. Right. And, you know, right. Which is it's cool for the artists, but it's more cooler for the people that really own them songs, that really own the masters, that's really running them companies, that's really... Mm 
quality of the money is way better for them than it is for these artists that you think you support. Yeah, no doubt. I feel you on that. I feel you on that. I like that answer too. I see your online presence is heavy. You staying busy with your quarantine bars. You know, I heard you say um, COVID only 19, it ain't grown yet. For sure. Those beats, those beats we heard on, on quarantine bars are yours, correct? Yeah, I was just pulling up my own beats, just, you know what I mean, giving out some bars just for quarantine, just to, <clears throat> just to keep the streets flooded. You know what I mean? They needed to be entertaining. There wasn't a lot of artists dropping music or dropping bars, so I just decided to jump in that bag. And it's easier to do it on my own beach. You don't got to worry about no situations or, you know what I mean? So that's what I did. I actually mm -hmm. dropped 11 records on all platforms. There's 11 new records that I produced. Um, recently. So it's called Bars and Beats. There's a little wave I'm doing where I'm producing okay. 10 of it and I'm writing 100% of it. So okay. I'm about Bars and Beats and I've been releasing records for a minute now. There's 11 of them, on, like 11 to 12 of them on all platforms. And I constantly be releasing them every week. That's what's up. Show people that I'm still going in with the bars and I'm going in with the beats because I'm bodying my own beats and I'm bringing bars to the table just to show people my work ethic. All right, all right. I got, a, I got a serious project where I'm using <clears throat> all my relationships, all my producers, my whole team, um, production, samples, features, you know what I mean? My real full project I'm working on. It's called The Energy. It's, it's pretty much done. I got over 30 records done. I got like five more to do. And then I'm going to narrow it down and put it together and put it out. So it should be out real, real soon. And it's crazy. I'm happy with it. It's like the best project I ever put together. I've never been this excited about no music before, so I can't wait till the streets get it. I'm here. That's what's up. You you don't work with Kells. You don't work with Trackmaster, Swiss Beats. I want to fast forward and talk about Mayhem Music. Now, I know, um, I think it was your Bars album, the Barry, Barry Adrian Restory. Is, that's when you did your first track? You produced your first track on that one? Yeah, for sure. It was called All By Myself. Um... I actually was talking about it on the intro of the song, saying that Swiss flew out. He had some business to do. He was in Arizona with me, but he flew out. He had to take care of some. And I was there with Neo. Neo the Matrix was a producer that I was working with heavy in the beginning of my career. Right. And he fell asleep. He was high smoking. He fell asleep. Swiss wasn't there. I probably had <laughs> already, but finished it up, like finished recording everything I had to record, and I was ready to keep working. And yeah. I so I just went over to Neo MPC. And I'm like, man, I done seen Swiss, Neo, all these niggas make beats so many times. I could probably figure it out. So I just went over there, just start trying to figure it out, fucking with it. And um, once I found the sample and I looped the sample, and it locked up right away. Perfect. Yeah. It was sounding so cool. <laughs> I got to finish this. And I start banging it out. Yeah. Once I Hanging it out, getting halfway through the beat. Neo start getting up. So I start asking him, like, yo, you know what I mean? What, where your program's at? Like, where your, where, your, where your 808's at? Where your drums at? Where your snares at? Like, he started showing me where all the sounds is at. Right. Started putting the beat together. That was my first beat, and it made the album. But I wasn't really wow. serious on the production tip. Like, even though my first beat made the album and it was dope, I, I didn't still consider myself a producer because I, I wasn't really going in. I didn't even have a... A beat machine. I ain't. I ain't really take it serious. I went on somebody else's machine and just made it. So, even though yeah. I record, I ain't consider myself a producer yet. You so, I mean? let, so tell, so tell me, how did you get in, into doing the production yourself? Did you do it because you didn't like, like what was being presented to you, beat wise, or was it just, um, you know, from that experience or a hobby that turned into something more? What was that process? Like? Combination. Of that experience, people seen my talent because a lot of producers, even some of the biggest producers in the world, if you hear their story about when they first started, nobody really liked them when they first started. Like, nobody believed in them. Like when I hear these producers' stories, it took them a, a while for people to understand their sound and to fuck with them. But for right. my first beat and it make an album and people still fuck with it to this day, that meant a lot. Like that show that you got probably God given talent and potential. And if you really lock in and really learn how to do this shit, you could really be a problem. And I'm right. I've seen that like in my label, my team. So not too long after that, Swiss Beats bought me my first NPC. It was the 2500. 
And even though I was working on a project and rapping at that time, maybe he must have seen something in me from the beats that I was making or whatever and knew mm -hmm. that I'd be good at production because he bought me the MPC. And once I got the MPC, right. I started learning it a little bit more. Um, I made a few more beats too. Like um, I produced beats on my Cash album on certain mixtapes I was dropping. So I made beats on that MPC, but it was scattered. Like every six months, hey, eight months, once a year. Like I wasn't really right. banging out. It's just because I had the machine. Consistent with it. Learning how to make it. And I was making yeah. beats that was, I was able to use, but I still wasn't fully committed to producing because I was so locked in the rap. Like I ain't, I ain't really think about it. Right. I guess like probably like, right. over, um, it's been less than a year, but I say about eight months ago, I really was like, yo, um, I'm just in a space where I feel like I want to grow and just want to learn more because, um, you know, I've been doing this rap shit for 20 years straight. And 20 years ago, arguably people were saying that I was the best. So when you feel like you're the best when you're 17 and then you've been doing it for 20 years straight, it's hard to keep that same hunger and same compassion, especially when you learn how shiesty the business is, all of the things that go on to keep the same hunger from when you were a kid is hard. So I, I understand. Go battle rapping, started making beats and doing every other thing that I could do to, to make it more entertaining for me and interesting. And I got back feeling young again and got back excited from making the beats. So it was a good thing. So the last eight months I've been going heavy and that's why I've been putting out records, even producing for other people and stepping it up. Like, I mean, on the production side, so no been less than a year, <clears throat> I give it, um, you know, I give myself another, you know what I mean, year or two before, you know what I mean? I'm, <laughs> I'm really, really, really one of the best at, at doing this shit. Most of the mm -hmm. people I look up to, they definitely got over 20 years in, all of them. Like all of them, yeah. Yeah. Back, yeah. Got over 20 years in, and I don't even got a year in yet. So people right. be trying to compare me to them, and that's not fair. That's like trying yeah. to dude that just started rapping last week to me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. That. But yeah, no doubt. I mean, I'm definitely, I definitely love it. I'm excited. And it, and every time I make a beat, I'm getting better and better and better. So I love it, man. It shows, it shows in the tracks so on, your, on your track research. I heard, um, I heard, I think I heard a reference to Cootie Rap as being a reason you picked up the pen. And I also heard uh, a reference to EPMD when you said, if you don't know your history, then how can you pretend to be the culture? You're just a vulture, and that's a sin to me. Speak to that point. Um. Yeah, it's like uh, a lot of people say that they in the hip hop and they in the rap, but they don't really understand it. They don't really understand the culture. They're not really true, true fans. They just ride the wave fans. Now, in every sport, every business, you got to ride the wave fans. Even in boxing, you got to ride the wave fans. And the ones that got the most ride the wave fans is the ones that could get the most money. Like the Floyd Mayweathers, the Mike Tysons, the Roy Joneses, they got the most. When I say ride the wave fans, in case you don't understand, it's like a way of saying like a fan that's not really a fan of the actual sport of boxing. They just... Yeah, but see this fight because this fighter is popular for other reasons no doubt no doubt talking about them they might have seen the interview they might have there's different reasons why they interested in the fight but they're not really boxing fans they don't really understand the rules the science to boxing they can't really tell you nothing about what you're supposed to do right and wrong how you're supposed right. to see how to right. throw a accurate punch they don't know none of that they just want to see it because it's just floyd you know what i'm saying no doubt and a lot no doubt. of a lot of rap fans is the same way. Like they say they like rap, but they don't understand the science. They don't understand none of the rules or what is required to even write a dope rap. They just go with whatever seems like it's the most popular at the time. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So I was running with the torch. Like, you don't really know the culture. You don't really know your history. You ain't do no research. You can't really even judge somebody raps if you don't even know the history. Like if that rap was um, redid, 10 times already through different points of time in hip hop. That same thought that that man just said, it could have been 10 artists at 10 different time periods that did that same thought already. But if you never heard none of them 10 artists say it, and this is the first person that you heard say it, it might seem like it's incredible or dope to you. You might, oh, that's crazy. But right. you don't know that 
10 other people that said the same thing the same way before him. And all he did is just repeat what he heard somebody else say. And you giving him the credit for something that somebody else thought about. So right. you know your history in order to be able to do that and or really analyze stuff the right way. And some yeah. people don't even know the history farther than five or 10 years back. And maybe don't even know that. So that's what I'm telling like people, they got to really study the science of hip hop to be able to be critics and to understand how to break it down and be able to judge what's dope and what's not. Tell them, tell them, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, I want to commend you for always holding bars to a higher standard. You know, you, you setting the bar high, so to speak. And here on the spot, we value beats and rhymes, and most of all, we respect bars, you know? So we hold MCs to a higher standard because of it. And I love that you shout bars is back. You know sure. what I'm saying? Without, sure. without, um, without, naming, without naming nobody, without, you know, shitting on nobody, do you ever get frustrated with the bars that you hear from some of the artists these days? Oh, not to cut you off, but I just want people to know when I'm saying that bars is back too. Um, it's like a double, maybe even a chip one time, like the things that I be meaning, like bars is back, the actual bars, like lyrics, being a lyricist is back. Like for years and years, the machine was pushing artists that wasn't too lyrical because it, it was a certain purpose that they was doing that. But they was pushing artists that wasn't too lyrical for a minute. So the world thought that that was the wave. Not being lyrical was the thing to do because they don't understand the business. But I knew mm -hmm. it was only a matter of time before that came back around. So what I was saying is bars is back. Like the main fans of the culture want to hear bars now. They got enough dance music. They got, they had enough fun. They done popped and snapped and jumped and kicked and did all this enough. Now they, they need to be taught something. Like we in a time, in a, in a period of time where there's a lot of serious things happening and a lot of confusion is going on. There's no real leadership. So people like, like to listen to music for that type of guidance. And it's hard to get it when you listen to a bunch of stupid people with no information. So mm -hmm. I want to hear people that got a head on their show that's smart and could put bars together the right way. And that's what they looking for. So I meant that when I said bars is back, but also my name bars, like, you know what I mean? I was born with the name bars, that's my name. So I'm letting people know that I'm back. Like, and, and some people like bars never left. What I mean is it's back at, um, it's back at the focus. Like, you know what I mean? Bars was always around, like I was always around spitting bars, but the majority of people wasn't focused on bars at the time. They were somewhere. Mm -hmm but it's switching around. It's like, it's still them other people, but the majority of the culture is starting to get back to where they supposed to be and demanding bars. So that's what I mean by saying bars is back. I'm back myself going harder than ever. And the feel of wanting to hear a dude get busy is back. Like that feeling is back. That energy is back. Maybe three, four years ago, you used to talk to a dude about bars. It wasn't the same conversation as it is now. Like, you that's know, a fact. that's a fact. Different wave now. And that's what yeah. I mean, my bars is back. But I've been talking about that for a long time to let people know that it's coming back. And me doing that is part of the reason why it's coming back. Because people starting to right. see what they're missing out on. Like, yo, we've been smoking dirt weed for too long and it's way better weed out there. Like, why? Right, right. Smoking this dirt, <laughs> that fire over there. And niggas, yeah. first they felt like, yo, we got all this weed, we get high, we lit, everybody hyping it up like it's lit. Until mm -hmm. they and little signs and niggas might, they might have seen niggas over there looking like they smoking better and having more fun. And they're like, hold up, what the fuck? Why are we mm -hmm. separate exactly. from us? And then people like, nah, we need that. We need that more fire. Just like back in the day, you, you know, dirt used to be for sale in the hood. It used to, even if it was somebody that had high grade in the hood, a lot of people had dirt. But that just went out. It, it went out because the demand changed. So people ain't even want dirt no more, really. Like they, like even the dirt now is still high grade. It's just like a dirt, mm -hmm. it's like a dirt level of high grade, but it's <laughs> high grade. It's not like the sticks and seeds dirt that used to be around back in the day because the demand is different. No doubt, no doubt. It's about to happen. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's important to, to show somebody better than you tell them. And with, with all the bodies of work you've been putting out, you know, over the years and recently with, with all, all the heavy content that you've been putting out on social media, it's like you you are more in the showing you better than I could tell you about the quality of work I put out. 
for sure. And the work ethic. It's showing people how hard I work. Like with me being around this long and got so many accomplishments already, I could be a dude that's kicking my feet up and just trying to like get my flowers and just let people know all of the things that I already did. But I'm not in that bag. Like, I mean, I mean I'm working harder than new dudes. You could find a dude 16, 17 years old, no responsibilities, no kids, no bills, no job, no nothing. And I'm working harder than them. And it's like, <laughs> I got family responsibilities, businesses, a lot of things to do. And I'm producing, I'm rapping, I'm executive producing. I got my own production company. I got artists under me. It's like, I'm doing a lot of stuff and I'm still creative. Every day I'm able to do something and put something up. So that's just showing a different level of work ethic than artists been showing lately. You know what I mean? And it it encourage a dude, even dudes that's on a job already, it just encourage them to stay on a job or want to work harder. And not exactly. just, even if y'all doing this, y'all show. People doing whatever they doing, it just encourage people to just want to get on a job and work harder. Like instead of just thinking everything is like hitting the lottery and you can just relax your whole life and everything just fall in your lap. Because yeah. it doesn't look like that. When you see people that's successful and up and you want to be like that and you're trying to figure out how they did it, it's from grinding and staying on it, not just sitting back and just they just just got it. Like you know what I'm saying? And everything no everything is not gonna be perfect when you get in the business, any business, not just rap, but any business is never gonna be perfect. But if you believe in yourself and you understand the business, then you can always work and fight until you start getting more comfortable and getting more in position and how you want it to be. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I've been doing this whole time, just working to get it how I want it, but I want people to know that that's possible. You don't gotta bend and fold and listen to these people telling you that you gotta change everything about yourself and not believe in yourself and not do nothing that you wanna do in order to succeed, because that's not the truth. And I wanna be living proof of it. I wanna be one of them dudes that went against the grain, didn't do nothing that they told me to do, and I'm still extra successful and I'm still considered to be the nice, because that's why I'm influence the next generation and wanna do the same. Stand, stand on no some, something and not just be like them flim flamsy artists that's willing to do any and everything just for a little bit of success because it could be good for them momentarily or seem like it's good for them but you even see them artists be telling stories about how they go broke and it's not good for them but also the legacy be fucked up because they went in the wrong direction when they had the light like you know what i'm saying so whether i got the machine behind me or not i still got my core fan base and my support because i've never been folded to change or pull up this mm -hmm. in 2020 or pull up an interview I did 20 years ago and I will have mm -hmm. the same approach. Somebody might have asked me a similar question back then and ask it now and it's the same type of answer. Not like no mm -hmm. publicist told me to say something some certain way or I'm trying to hide something or answer it a certain way to protect this. Or, mm -hmm. Never see me like that. And that's why people really respect <clears throat> me, not everybody, because it's not the machine to push me out and everybody face at once. But the people that do come across me and get to see me, that's why they fall in love and really fuck with me, opposed to the other niggas that's around. You know what I'm saying? It's not the same. Yeah, real recognize real for sure. So what was some of the inspiration behind one of your latest tracks? The the four elements. Um the four I'm elements. so glad you made that, by the way. It all connected to what we was just talking about, like me trying to teach. Um, the new generation about hip hop, like what came before them. Like a lot of them not even familiar with the work I put in and I might've been a generation right before them. So they definitely don't know about the dudes that came before me and before them. And it's like, so I'm just trying to give them information so they can understand the history. Cause it's easier to know where you could take the industry if you know where it came from and how much progression was made in that period of time and who played a part in that progression happening. So that's why I wanted to break down like what played a part in me becoming this monster. Like when I started listening to rap, what I heard, how I heard it and what it did to me to make me into this, this machine I am. I wanted to break that down and give people some information and let people know that it's rules and regulations to this culture. Even though it's a business and the business might overshadow the culture, the culture is really what's gonna keep hip hop alive. Like the business, the people that's cutting the checks, they making it seem like they believe in it now because it's a successful business. But when it first started, they thought it was a fad and they wasn't even willing to invest in it. They, was, they wasn't even willing to do none of the things that they act like they're willing to do now. 
to them same people that y'all trusting and didn't even believe in hip hop. So it's impossible for them to run the culture. They can never run the culture. They just the check cutters. But the people that run the culture is going to always come back around and make the culture go in a certain direction. It's going, it might take time, but it's always going to happen. You know what I'm saying? And that's the reason why I made that four elements to let people know it's about DJing, dancing, graffiti, MCing. It's like certain rules and certain things that you like, even if you want to be big or whatever, it's just certain things that you can't forget about. It's just like the it's structure. It's a structure. It's just like what it is. And people be forgetting about that. But when they do forget, there's nobody to let them know. There's nobody to check them. Like, yo, you ain't do that right. Or you, nah, you can't do that. Like it used to be back in the day. It used to be like certain people that would check you right away and, and give you some type of guidelines to follow so you would know how to carry it. But now it's not a lot of them around there. Just let anybody say, do whatever they want to do. And it got to be somebody around to let people know the truth. And that's why I'm making records like that. Definitely. Got to teach the youth them. That's that issue. That's, also, that's one of the records I also produced too. Um, what I was telling you about on the bars and beats, like how I'm making the beats and, and rapping on it. That's that's one of the records I produced right there, the four elements. That's just tight. You're going to... um. Now that you're doing a lot of production on your own, you're gonna are you gonna work with uh, like cats like Swiss Beats again? Um, Swiss Beats not even doing music right now, so I know a lot of people be asking me that. Um, I'm always working, and um, Swiss my family, so if he ever wanted to work, I'm always a text or a phone call away. He always know he could get with me, but um, Swiss got a lot of other stuff going on. He's not even really working that much no more. He got a lot of other things going on. So I'm not sure if we'll work or will we or won't we, but I know I'm going to keep working. And whenever he's ready, he could jump on board, if you mean. That's what's up. That's what's up. I feel you. That relationship is there. The last um, last battle, you, I think you are, you killed Arsenal. You know who the next person is going to be on the, on the hit list or no? You, you just know when the bag comes. Yeah, I never know. Um, when the leagues offer me a situation and they say they got the right bag, I tell the league to pick whoever they want. So I, I never, mm -hmm. it was just I don't I don't really got no picks like that. Battle rap already too easy for me. It's only three verses. That's why I say I try to do so much. Other things why I got a battle going on because it's just too easy for me. So to make me want to get motivated and get on my job, I got to do a bunch of other stuff too. Uh -huh. so it would definitely be easy if I could pick who I wanted to battle because then the focus would be on that person and it would be worse. So I just yeah. let whoever they want to pick. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I feel you. I'm the next, the next, um, I've been like, <clears throat> as far as the business going battle rap, I run it. Like you could ask any league owner, like I'm the energy of battle rap. Like, all of the comments that people make, those be opinionated comments, but I'm talking about who really run this. Like, I draw the most attention, I get the most views, I sell the most tickets, I put up the biggest pay-per-view numbers. I'm the most energy in battle rap. All the league owners know that. So I stay on the phone with them all the time. We be always trying to negotiate and put things together to better the culture. You know what I'm saying? It just gotta make sense. And I'm such a big brand that it's hard to just make it make sense as easy as it is to make sense with them other rappers. They can set right. up any situation and present it to them and they gonna be willing to do it. But with right. me, it make perfect sense. So it'd be, it'd be, you know what I mean? More negotiation and take more time for them to build up the budgets and put it together the right way. But I'm right. always to them, R, um, RBE, he doing um, something called social distance too right now. He, he got like 21 battles or something like that. I think he released a few of them already. A murder mook one, a, a hollow the dime one. But he doing like 21 of them and he dropping it all through this time that we going through. Um, I actually did a drop for that. I'm on the, um, on the intro of those battles, doing a drop, letting people know that, you know what I mean? Those battles is taking the culture to the next level. So I talk to ARP all the time, talk to Smack all the time. We trying to make yeah. something happen. So as far as me jumping back in the ring, I'm going to have to, because I'm the energy. They, they're going to have to figure something out sooner or later. So. That's my answer. I know I'm gonna definitely be doing it, but as far as the person and the time, that's not edged in stone yet. But as soon as it is, you know, I'm a promoter. I'm gonna let people know. I'm gonna go hard. <laughs> what's about to happen and how we about to do it so we can get it right. 
and they'll be within and they'll be in the crosshairs. Something um I forgot, but you reminded me of during our conversation today, Cass. You you box, you still box? All right, to add on to the last question, hopefully my next battle is somebody more like somebody I feel accomplished more and did more so that I could feel more motivated to want to crush them. Like the dude that they put me up against was just only battle rappers that ain't really have no accomplishments. So I felt like it wow. was for me to lose to them anyway, like no matter what they say, even if they say they best rap, it's just like, it don't matter. Like I, I wasn't really motivated to beat them. And it's like, after you beat these guys, it's like whoop-de-doo. And when I came back, I beat disaster, then I beat goods. And it's like, it's not enough hype. Like y'all don't respect it. Me taking 15, 20 years off, come back, smacking niggas around. Y'all not acting like I'm doing what I'm doing. So that's why I wasn't really taking it too serious. Like, it's like, it's hard for me to do that. You know yeah. what I mean? But, um, if it was like a rapper that had more accomplishments and did more, maybe I would feel more motivated to want to crush him. So I hope it's a bigger artist like that with more accomplishments, my next battle, hopefully. But like I said, I don't got no picks, man. I'm going to let them pick them again and whoever they make the victim. <clears throat> that's going to be it. So you well, got I think after all, I'm sorry, I mean, it's I mean, step on your feet. I was just going to say real quick. I think after this whole madness is over with the whole COVID-19 shit that any event will be, you know what I'm saying, welcomed and we'll, and we'll be excited for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't wait, man. It's about to open back up, though. You know what I mean? It's been, been a long period of time. I already see things changing up and opening back up. So things should be rolling along soon. And it seemed like it's stagnating the culture momentarily. It seemed like it's some losses. It seemed like some artists taking some hits because they can't tour and do shows, and that's how the majority of them make their money. But um, yeah, some, that's a tough situation. Sometimes a bad thing could be a blessing in disguise, and I just know um, from doing my research in the next five to ten years, the music industry is going double in worth. So if it's worth whatever it's worth now, it's going to double. Mm. What so that means it's gonna be way more money coming through, way more opportunities for artists that's talented to get money. You know, so it can seem like it's a bad thing, but it's making the industry grow. It's getting the world more interested in music and into good music. So it's gonna be a good thing for the real people that go in and make real quality music and got a good work ethic and ready to put in that work. It's gonna be good for them artists soon, like in the next couple of years after this open back up and we start to see things change, it's going to get better for a lot of artists. And, um, hopefully, a lot of artists smarten up or been smartening up and smartening up around this time so they could take advantage of the industry growing and more money coming in so they could get a bigger portion of that money and uh -huh. stop such a small percentage that they've been getting up into this point. You know uh -huh. Real talk. Go ahead, Pete, what you was going to say? Yeah, now I wanted to talk about that that hate track that you got. Yeah, now we, we, that's another record. That's another record I produce. Like I be trying to jump in all different bags. So that record is nothing like the four elements on the production side. The beat per minute, the bounce is completely different. Vibe, sound, the way I'm flowing to it and attacking it is different. And that's what I'm doing nowadays too. Like every track I put out is completely different. A lot of artists could release new songs all the time, but they are similar. All the similar beat per minute, similar type of ad lib, similar voice, similar flow. But with me, it's like, you never know what bag I'ma jump in. I be doing all different bags. But when you get on your job and you get super focused, you could feel the hate. And people take hate as a bad thing. They don't like hate. They don't like when people make negative comments or, or, or give them hate. But I be trying to tell people from experience, that's the best thing. When you start to see hate, when you start to see negative comments and, and people feeling some type of way, that's showing that you're making an impact on the good side. Because people mm. like to battle good with negative. They like to battle like positive with negative. Like that's how people troll. So it gotta be a lot of people thinking positive things about you for these people to be making negative comments or hate. If, if, if there wasn't no attention on you, then they wouldn't want to hate because you're not getting no light. So there's nothing to hate on. They only hate when you get an attention from the people that love you. Hate that. So they want to comment and not that. You know what I'm saying? So you yeah. must be right when you feel the hate. So that's the reason why I made that song to let people know the real way I take hate. 
and what it really mean and, and how I deal with it. But did it in a new way. So not only can the real loyal hip hop fans, they gonna get lyrics and get concepts like from back in the day, but it's, it's bounces and melody in it to where a new wave fan that don't know none of the history is still like it because of the way it sound and the melodies and things like that. So it's a mesh of everything that hip hop brought to the table so far. And that's what I'm doing in my music. And it's hard for a lot of artists to do that. They either come with the old school way and try to knock the new school and say, that's not it. Or they all the new school way and don't got none of the essence of the, the things that the old school had. But what's going to be the new wave is who can mesh both together the best. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Now, I know this has been said probably a million times throughout the history of hip hop and that hip hop is dead. But do you feel that hip hop ever died? Nah, hip hop could never die. Um, that's manipulation. Hip hop not dead. Even some of the people that, you know, was around when hip hop first started to grow, still living. I mean, some of them passed away. We lost some of the greats, but a lot of them are still living, still around. A lot of the people that played a part in the hip hop growing and becoming the, the huge business it is now is still alive. So it's impossible for hip hop to die if the people that can remember it from the beginning still got memories of it and they still alive. They said you live as long as the the, the, the last person that remembers you. So, I mean, hip hop can never die because there's still so many people around that is constantly in their mind and they'll never forget about it, whether they live a hundred years or if they live, they figure out a way for people to live to be a million years old. There's some people that will never forget about hip hop. Even if it left today, just the impact that it made in your body up until this point, you will still never forget about it. So it's impossible for hip hop to die. So I don't ride with that. It's just that the business, the way they make money over it is, is, is what's backed by the media and whatever the media put in your face is what you think is going on. But that's not really necessarily what's going on because there's billions of people in the world. So even if this artist is popular and he got a hundred million views and he got all of this, which could be manipulated numbers, but even if they was true, even if a hundred million people did watch this person or this artist and do like them. It's still um, 7 billion more people in the world that you can appeal to that didn't watch that video. But that's not mm -hmm. what, no, it make you think like you need every single person in the world to like you. And that's impossible. Every single person in the world don't like Madonna. Every person in the world don't like Michael Jackson. Every person in the world ain't like Elvis. Every person in the world don't like the Beatles. Like I know mm -hmm the biggest groups ever but when I go on my listening sessions I don't pull up the Beatles I don't pull up Elvis not knocking them there's millions of people that only play them but that's right. not I'll be in just like some right. of them that might play Elvis and the Beatles might never pull up Teddy Pendergrass they might never pull up no Marvin Gaye shit or no Delphonics so or they might never pull up none of the stuff I'll be in like you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. everybody got their own shit that they like and that they into and that's why I should be a selection for everybody. Like if it was only orange soda, it'd be fucked up. Like, of course, a lot of people might like orange soda. Niggas like Sunkiss, Fanta, all that. But what about mm -hmm. the people like Coke, like Sprite, like ginger ale, like Mountain Dew? Like it's like mm -hmm. other people that got different tastes and gonna order different shit. Some people that don't drink soda at all. Like I would never drink soda. Give me water. Some people like, what? Yeah. Give me air. Niggas like, man, fuck that. Give me a shot. Niggas like, what? Mm -hmm. give a shot. Give me some coffee. Everybody. Mm -hmm. You can't say what's better or what's worse. Like you, that's why all them things is available for everybody to get. You know what I'm saying? And that's the yeah. same with this music, man. Not knocking the dance wave or the dudes that don't might not use as many lyrics or might. You know what I mean, that need to be available because it's the time for that. When I'm in the club or when I'm in certain bags, I'll be liking that type of energy. is 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 appropriate for certain times, but not right. all. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah other bags that I'll be in other times I'll be wanting to hear other shit and I'll be searching for that form of music which is not available like you know what I'm saying so um hip hop ain't never gonna die man to get back to that it ain't never gonna die it's gonna always be alive and it's gonna keep growing and getting bigger you see hip hop is the biggest form of music alive right now they huh. thought it was gonna be a fad they thought it was gonna come and go they ain't even take it serious now it's bigger than the biggest forms of music it's bigger than rock mm -hmm. Pop is bigger than country right now. It's the mm -hmm. Music, so it's like 
it's impossible for it to die now. It's gonna always be around and it's gonna keep growing. But just know because there's so much energy around it and because it's so big, it's always gonna be people in it that's not a part of the culture that's just trying to get the money from it. So mm -hmm. they're gonna be a part of influence and what go on and what happens. And that's where it'd be confusion at. Is the average person think that that's all connected. What's hot is what they push. What is, what is what they support. They just connect it like that, but that's not necessarily true. And if you ask anybody that did anything in the business, even if they was on the street team, they could let you know that it don't work like that. Yeah. I think the internet killed the, the uh, record label. I think that's the part of hip hop that died. Because now, you know, you, yeah, most, most people doing their independent thing. When I came around, there was hundreds of record labels and they always cutting budgets. They all had mm -hmm. artists. It was all playing with budgets. All of them wasn't the same. Some of them was bigger than others, but they all had them, and there was hundreds of them. Now it's right. like all the labels left. It's like three labels left with budgets. Mm -hmm. you, only like, yeah. you, you only got a like, couple people you could go to to even get a situation now. That's yeah. That got to be for a reason. You know what I'm saying? Anybody could be like, damn, there was hundreds of them then that all had budgets. Now it's only this limited amount. Like, it got to be a reason behind that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you that that World Wide Web, man, you can sit and become an artist on your laptop now, and it's nothing. But it's easy for me to explain that the reason why people needed record deals in the past wasn't because they needed to develop their talent or the record labels help them get better. I mean, it was that it was artist development back then, and like Motown and people, they had teams that would help you get better and nicer. But that yeah. wasn't the reason why people needed record deals. They needed record deals for one, for distribution. Back in the day before mm -hmm. technology, how would you even get your album into another state? Or like, if you've never been to, if I'm from New York, I'm gonna get my album in California in the store. Mm -hmm. And I don't have no connects and no nobody out there. Mm -hmm. That's just in the country. But better yet, I'm gonna get my album in the stores in Russia or in Australia or a, yeah. a, that I've never been to before. I don't even speak that language and I don't got no connects. How am I gonna get my music over there to them people it's not exactly. so much money relationships and stuff that is going to be hard to do so that's why mm -hmm. you need labels because they already had them relationships and that type of distribution plus if you wanted to sell a million records back in the day before this digital distribution and all this stuff you needed to have a million cds printed up back in the day cds used to cost you used to have to pay at least two dollars a cd a dollar two dollars three dollars a cd something like that so we're going to go mm -hmm. with, let's say you had to pay $2 a CD and you wanted to sell a million records. That means you would have to have a million records printed up before you drop to be able to ship out for them to be able to sell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Records printed up, if they was $2 a record, that means you would need $2 million, not including recording and features and promo and all the stuff that you already did, just an extra $2 million just to spend on the records, not mm -hmm. including distribution and the placement in the stores just for the records alone you would need another two million dollars to get it printed up who had that type of money like even the dudes yeah. that had back and had drug dealers backing them they still ain't have two million and then another two million to record the project and then another two million for radio money and marketing and promote they didn't have that type of money like you know yeah. what i'm saying that's why you was required to get a record deal back then that was the only way even studio time back in the day i remember it was like two thousand dollars a night $1,500 a night just for one session. Eight hours lock mm -hmm. session was $2,000. You used to have to have multiple engineers when you used to deal with reels. To cut reels and record people, you couldn't have one engineer. You needed multiple engineers and engineering assistants and all type of stuff. Sessions mm -hmm. were more expensive. So to get a song recorded, it took real money. You couldn't just be a regular street nigga going into the studio. That shit was expensive. So you needed record deals back then for those reasons. But now with technology, it's so cheap to record. Everybody got a studio in their crib. Technology advanced the way you could get ready your quality sound and material on whatever type of equipment you got. Like, you know and I'm saying, especially if you know how to work it right. Um, mm -hmm. Distribution is technology now is digital distribution. So now you can upload something to a site, ding. And now every country, everywhere around the world can all get it at the same exact time. Even if it's a time difference, and it's a different time where they at, they could still get it at that same time. And everybody got access to it and you don't got to worry about getting it in stores or getting it over there because everybody could get it from the same place. 
So I make a really <clears throat> creative and to build up a fan base and to make money from what you're doing. And a lot of people understanding that and learning that. So that's the reason why you see things going the way it's going. It's the streaming game. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think that it, for me, it, it is for the better. And um, I, I know I don't want to, you kind of said it real quick earlier and I, I don't want to glance over it, but you said you have artists that you have under you. You want to yeah. speak on um, um, well, Jag is an artist that I've been working with for years. He on a lot of my music on all platforms. You could just type in Cassidy featuring Jag. He on so much music I did in the past, but he got a lot of projects that he working on and that he putting out at the time. And um, uh, Reggae Ratchet, she on my last project, Numbers. That's available on all platforms. Numbers was 14 records, and then for the next 14 days after the record drop, I dropped the single every day. So it added up to 28 records. That's the Numbers album is out on my platforms. Reggae Ratchet, she on a lot of those songs, and we working on her project right now, and it's super, super crazy. So that's next in line. So Reggae Ratchet, y'all should be hearing her this summer, her singles and her music. And this. I'm excited about that because she's she, she crazy. It's super dope. <laughs> that's what's up. It I just, tried to... Go ahead, go ahead, Joe. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. And I just want to say, like, you know, when, when you put in the, the music out and you're talking about you have, you know, oh, certain... I got this talk about my new, I got, uh, what did it do is Libby to the T is a, a producer, his name Cricklet Beats. And he's one of the best in the world, man. He got a crazy sound. Um, He got a new style called Neo Hop. Where it's like neo soul type of feels, but it's on like hip hop bounces and it's like crazy. But he's super dedicated and locked in. He the newest installment to the to the Goat Gang Mayhem music team. He crazy. Um, you're gonna hear a lot of he did most of the production on my new project. So you're gonna hear a lot from him real soon. And he's a monster. But he also do music too. He rap, sing, do a lot of other stuff. So you'll be hearing some music from him real soon too. Okay, okay. I wanted to ask you this earlier because um during the conversation you reminded me of something. You uh you used to box. You still box? Nah. Um I'm an old man now, man, you know. <laughs> hey, Mike Tyson's coming back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's entertaining, man. I actually spoke on that in some bars um yesterday. It's good to see, man. I was always a Tyson fan. Um yeah. Only Phil getting back in shape. Shannon Briggs, yep. he's been in shape. He an older mm -hmm. dude. Fight. I even yep. seen you know what I'm saying? He thinking about coming back here, fight somebody over 50. So, <laughs> like, it's good to see these dudes, you know what I'm saying? Still in shape, still going hard. Yeah. Also motivating <clears throat> the dudes that's super falling off and super out of shape. It's motivating them to get on their job. To say, the same way I said I want to motivate people with these bars and this music. The yeah. same motivating people to let them know, like, yo, I'm 57 or 55 or 53, and you see how I look, I'm like a monster. And it's like I'm I'm working out every day and still no going yeah. jobs and got podcasts and got family and got responsibilities, but I'm still figuring out time to get in shape. Mm -hmm. So the younger dude, like, damn, I'm half his age. I, I should be able to like at least do half of what he's doing. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah motivation so I let us see that and I'm a super boxing fan it's like probably my favorite sport you know what I mean so um, but you know it's like riding a bike man you know certain things you can never lose especially when you practice it for so long so my hand my hand still go crazy man you know what I'm saying I <laughs> my stretch do my push stay in good shape so they can still go but you know what I mean <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. The stamina ain't the same. I got you. I got you. It's all good. Yeah, yeah man. I think we all going to be excited to see Mike do his thing again, man. Even if it is for charity, even if it is just for like three or four rounds, just to see him back in there. Because, um, everybody, nothing... you know, everybody can't that ball, man. Plus, you know, Mike a good dude, man, and he's super smart. And for so many years, like yeah. the way the comedians used to joke about him and 
do his voice and the way to yeah. portray him, you would think he was a different type of dude than what he really is. Yeah. Now that he retired, now that he got his own podcast and you're starting to see him talk a lot and tell a lot of his story and you're starting to see how you look at life, you realize that he really a genius. Like just because mm-hmm. he's not using the, the big vocabulary all the time, like y'all want him to use and all that, he really a genius and he really got a lot of common sense. Like, you know what I'm saying? So now I think people even appreciate Tyson as a person more. So when he come back now, aside of all of the energy and all the excitement you remember him bringing to boxing, you also respect him more as a person now by how he carrying it. So it is definitely yeah. a good thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Petey, got a, you want to finish with anything, brother? Because I know it's getting close to the hour. Who y'all got, though? If, if Tyson and Holyfield go again at this age, that exhibition, who y'all got? Uh, I, I, I was. Well, I'm from, well, I'm, I'm from Brooklyn, Castle. I'm, you know, I'm a, you know who I'm going with. Yeah, you got to go with Mike. got to go with Mike. Mike, too, because just knowing that Mike has been able to focus and get back to himself, like, it, 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 he definitely would be a problem. Um, yeah, that'd be a good fight, man. Maybe. What you think, and you, with your expertise, what, what do you think? Um, my opinion, like, even when Holyfield was young, he always had a hell of a chin. Like, he was always like a smaller heavyweight. Yeah, for like sure. Chins. It was always hard to ho- hurt Holyfield. Like, nobody could just hurt him, drop him. Even when he had bad performances and wasn't looking his best, it still was hard for the opponent to really hurt him. You know, yeah. what I'm I know your chin, that really ain't gonna go nowhere. Like, you know what I'm saying? You always had a chin, you get in a little shape, you're gonna keep your chin. Maybe your speed and all that might not be the same. Right. You're gonna keep your chin. But another yeah. thing you're gonna keep is your punching power. And everybody, yeah. knows Mike Tyson always hit hard. So if he get back in shape, you're gonna still be able to throw something hard. And if you older, like Holyfield, or one of them dudes he might fight, and y'all don't got the lateral movement to be able to slip them punches. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. One of them hard shit's going to eventually hit you. And it's like, you know what I mean? So I take that in consideration. Plus, Holyfield, I think, got him. And, like, got, I think, like, five, like five or six years older than him. So that's going to play a big part, too. Like, even though they both over 50, you, I think, Ooh. Is like 57 or something like that. So yeah, 50, 56 or 57, you're right. Yeah, so that's gonna play a part too. He got like, you know what I mean? He way closer to 60 than Tyson. So, but it'd be good however they go, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm a fan of both of them, Holyfield and Tyson. They both warriors. It's gonna be hard to beat them both. So it'll just be a good fight to see. I I'll let us see it. <laughs> you but you never said, huh? I can't, I can't really pick, man. Especially on the exhibition, if it's gonna be three rounds, it's, it's gonna be hard. But I know I'm gonna be tuned in, man. I don't even want to say it. I, I, That's I what's up. Book a night though, where they do like a night like that, like bring Tyson and Holyfield back. Let um Shannon Briggs fight somebody. I mean, bring Roy back, then bring Layla Ali back to fight. You know what I mean? Uh, anyway, bring uh. all the- Back like for a night and let everybody see that on the pay per view card. You see all them legends on one night going Man, at it. Man, that's a, that sounds like a quarantine fight. I like to see. Yo, for real for real. But yo, we come to the, the end of the show, which like, I wish it didn't have to end. But definitely- it was a pl- it was a pleasure to have you here, Cass. You know what I mean? The big fans of your work, both past and present. We salute you for being one of the best to do it, my G. Nah, thanks for having me, man. And um, stay in contact, man. Hopefully, we get back on real soon and do this again, man, because I'm going to keep working. We're going to have some more shit to talk about. Definitely. Yo, we definitely going to keep in contact. And, and when you got these projects with the artists you work with and all that, just know you got a home here, and we got you. Salute, man. Thanks a lot, man. And everybody tuned in before I leave. Follow my social media, Cassidy underscore Larceny. That's L-A-R-S-I-N-Y. Blue check, so you know it's official. Um. And go to my webpage, www.cassidythehustler.com. The Cassidy, D-A-H-U-S-T-L-A, thehustler.com. Got all my merchandise, dad hats, snapbacks, hoodies, jackets, t 
t-shirts, sweatsuits. I got it all. I even got the Corona mask up there. So go support Real Hip Hop, get fly. Got my new videos and keep you in tune with everything I got going on on my website. So everybody that's tuned in, log into the website. And, um, also, listen to all that new music on whatever platform you got. No matter what platform you got, you could pull it up. Just type in my name and it's fire. All right, but yo, we gonna take it out with, with hate. Definitely. Let's get it. Uh. Yeah. Niggas hate you, make cake if they ain't making it too. That's why they hating on you. Look, putting work on their job when I'm making them do.